Okay, I'm here with uh, Lawrence Ham, Larry Ham of the People's Organization for Progress, and you can see our T-shirts, <laughs> People's Organization for Progress. Right, right. And um, we're going to have some video. I'm going to be showing you of uh, action that, that the People's Organization for Progress has been doing over the past. Two point seven trillion dollars on the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Meanwhile, here at home, schools are closing. Libraries are closing. Hospitals are being closed. We're facing catastrophic conditions, brothers and sisters. Police are being laid off. You know when they start laying off the police, we're in bad shape. If you think we need to spend that money at home and not on war, blow your horn. P.O.P. Is, is doing this? Uh, what, what is your thinking with this uh, action that you're doing and what this action is? Well, first of all, the action is a daily picket at the intersection of Springfield Avenue and West Market Street. We're calling it a daily rally for jobs, peace, justice, and equality. And the reason that we undertook this action is because we thought we needed to do something different tactically that would reflect the worsening conditions in our community. Uh, up until this point, our activities had been uh, periodic demonstrations around a variety of issues, which we will probably continue. Sure. But we felt that we needed to do something in addition to what we were already doing that would dramatize the sense of urgency that we had around the need to mobilize people around these issues that face us every day, some of which are on a local level, some of which are on a state level, and some of which are on a national level. The number one problem that we identified that has caused us to have these daily pickets would be the issue of unemployment in our community. And not just in our community, but the issue of unemployment in the nation. Right now, the United States has about 9.8% uh, unemployment level, almost 10%. Right. That's the official figure, but even that official figure is close to depression level unemployment, which is 10%. Um, if you have 10% unemployment, you're considered to be in a depression. And I think 
they're probably working frantically to do everything they can to keep that number from going to 10. Right. Uh, and then if you take into consideration that unemployment number is people who are looking for work, not people who have totally dropped that's out. Right. So really it's higher than that's right. Than 10. I've, I've heard some economists say that a conservative figure would be 16. That's right, I've heard that too. Right. So unemployment, uh, the nationally 9.9, 9.8%, almost 10%. Unemployment in urban communities is closer between 15 and 20 percent. Unemployment in the black community uh, is double the national the, the national black community is double the national level of unemployment. That's called structural unemployment. Right. Whatever the national level is, we come in. We always come in at twice that. And then if you were to segment out, say for instance, black men from the ages of um, say 16 to 25, you're going right. to get a 50% right. uh, unemployment level. It's a dire situation. That's just the people who are unemployed. That's That doesn't count the working poor. People who are working, but working basically at, at the minimum wage, which is really almost like a slave wage. Right. You know, uh, it doesn't include the working poor. Right now in the, in the city of Newark, nearly half the population lives at or below the poverty right. level. Right. Uh, so th this is very serious and what we're saying is what other people are also saying around the country is that we need a national jobs program. Uh, the situation is so dire that we cannot wait for trickle-down economics to solve this problem. You know the federal government has bailed out the banks uh, and the hedge fund managers and everybody to the tune of almost a trillion dollars. We need a bailout for the people. And what we're saying is that President Obama needs to do something along the lines of what President Roosevelt did in the 1930s, and that is, uh, through executive order, create a national jobs program. Right. Uh, he, I mean, if we could get Congress to pass it, fine. If not, the president could probably do something along the lines of an executive order. This is a national state of emergency, and we feel emergency measures should be taken to put people back to work now, and not at McDonald's wages, right. at union wages, and at a living wage, as Dr. King talked about. A working person needs a living wage, make enough money to pay the rent, and buy food, and raise the family, and uh, take care of all the all the needs that we have. So that's 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 the number one issue at the top of a whole list of demands. Some of the other things that we're uh, demonstrating for would be an end to the wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Libya, and Pakistan, and anywhere else right. uh, that we are at war. Right. A report came out today saying that we have spent. 2.7 trillion dollars on these wars. I don't even know what a trillion dollar right. looks like. Right. You know, I'm told that a trillion is 1,000 billion and right. a billion is 1,000 million. So, you know, we're it's spending unbelievable. right, it's unimaginable. We're, right? We're exactly that's the best word. We're spending unimaginable amounts of money on these wars, and we're saying we should end the wars now, not in two years. End them now. Bring the troops home now. And the money that we are spending on war should be spent at home for jobs, housing, education, health care, and other uh, domestic needs. So that's the number two demand. The number three demand uh, is to support uh, the rights of workers to collectively bargain. It seems like uh, we're going backward with respect to organized labor in this country. Looking for jobs, they must can't get a levels. job. infringing upon their right to collectively bargain. As we see in Wisconsin, they almost tried to end the right of public sector workers to collectively bargain. So that's the number three 
uh, point. And also other demands include man for national health care program. Uh, if Canada, our next door neighbor, a much less wealthy country than we are, could have health insurance for everybody, then we should be able to have the same thing. Other presidents going back to Truman have tried, actually going back to uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, tried to do it but never could really get the support, you know, because the, the insurance companies always opposed it. Right. And, um, you know, people have been trying over the years. We, we think it's time. Right, and um, even what has been passed now really doesn't live up right. to it, what, what we need. It's it's totally inadequate. Right. Even the public option was uh, taken totally off the table. Right, was taken off the table. Even if they were to put the public option on, it still would be inadequate. What we need really is a version of like uh, Medicare for all, mm -hmm. you know, so that everybody's covered. Those are, there are other demands, but those are some of the key demands uh, that we're we're picketing for every day and. Our approach right now, you know, we just wanted to get it started. So right now it's mainly pop members out there right. every day. But as we move along, we're going to try to move this effort to higher levels of organization. We're going to reach out to other grassroots community organizations. We're going to reach out to labor unions. We're going to reach out to churches. We're going to reach out to student organizations. And our approach is going to be to ask an organization to take a day on you know July 7th you know my group is going to bring our members out to join your picket line for that day we think that there are enough labor unions and churches and community organizations and student organizations there should be 365 organizations <laughs> that we can approach and ask each one to just pick one day out of the year and come join us because what what we're really trying to do of course, we're trying to bring awareness to the issues. But what we're trying to do is really get people stirred up. Right. We want to get people stirred up. We want to create a, a situation where we can't be ignored. I mean, if we could get this thing to the point of where we have a few hundred people out there every day, you know, that can't be ignored. And I'm sure if we can get a few hundred, that will grow and right. turn into something else. How long it'll take, I don't know. Will it actually happen, to tell you the truth? I don't know, but we gotta try. Right, so so what kind of response have you had so far? Oh, well today was the third day, and each day that we've been out there, we've had a, a fairly good response. We're actually um, uh, in front of the old Essex County Courthouse, right. uh, below the steps. Uh, of the courthouse is um, a statue of Abraham Lincoln and in front of that statue there's a plaza. So we're there and that little plaza is between the intersection of Springfield Avenue and West Market Street. So we're right there and the flow of traffic flows toward us up going west up Springfield Avenue. So like today, you know, we're speaking on the loudspeaker and people, today and yesterday, people were blowing their horns in support. And a lot of people at certain points were blowing their horns. You know, it really looked like people were showing their support, you right. know, for what, we, uh, what we're doing. So uh, I feel good about it. Uh, so far, so good. You know, we're going to take a poll of the members tomorrow, okay. tomorrow night, yeah. and see if people want to continue to go forward. And if they do, we'll, con we'll continue. We I'm hoping that we can at least keep this going, at least make 30 days, and then at the end of 30 days we'll evaluate, right. and if we think it's effective we'll go forward, if we don't think it's effective then we'll try something else. The point is that we have to fight back, right. and we have to find creative tactics which will uh, dramatize the situation, get people's attention, and connect people to what we're doing and, and finally get them involved because that's really the, uh, the, the ultimate objective of this is to, is to set people's souls on fire and get them involved in what we're doing. So what time does it start? How long does it go? Right. Monday through Friday it's at the intersection of Springfield and West Market. Saturday it's on the corner of Broad Market Street and Sunday we come back to the intersection of Broad Market. 
So when you come out to participate, or if you just want to see what we look at, look like, just look for these. Look for these yellow T-shirts. Right. You can't miss them. Right. Okay. So um, I want to ask you about um, what's happening in Greece.